Did you know that Tesla, the inventor of the AC electric system that most people use today, was actually nine years younger than Edison, the inventor of the modern light bulb? Many changes that dictate our lives today come from the Industrial Revolution, a time of unstoppable innovation and social change. One of the innovations that impacted the world was electricity, which is essential to our everyday lives. Many people cannot imagine living without it for more than a few hours. This advancement was investigated by two men from two different countries. Nikola Tesla was brilliant and fascinated by electricity. Thomas Edison was persistent and focused on inventing for a profit. Both men worked together for a time, but soon Tesla left Edison's business and went to work for George Westinghouse, starting the War of the Currents. The tension between these two men has fascinated people and has caused many to wonder which man was better. By examining each of them, we can better understand who they were and why each brought a unique strength that eventually gave us the electricity we have today. Who was Nikola Tesla? Nikola Tesla was born on July 10, 1856, in Smiljan, Croatia. Even as a child, he was inventive and curious about the world, although he did not do as well in school as might be expected. He was prone to accidents and was sickly, almost dying from cholera at 17. Luckily, he recovered and spent several years at engineering school and university. In 1881, he moved to Budapest and took employment with the Budapest Central Telegraph Office. He soon transferred to the telephone exchange as the chief electrical engineer. Around this time, Tesla began experimenting with an alternating current electrical system, or AC. Edison's system had already been developed. It was called a direct current system, or DC. The current only ran in one direction, requiring multiple power plants to properly support the second industrial revolution. Later on, Tesla would describe his invention process more like seeing visions, which is how he first envisioned his induction motor for the AC system. It would change voltage and reverse currents, making it unique at the time. While he worked on this motor, he also worked for Continental Edison, Thomas Edison's French branch of the Edison Company, to repair their DC systems in Germany and Paris. He finally sailed to America in 1884 and began working for Edison himself. Although Edison did not comprehend how Tesla's AC system could fix the issues with DC, he still hired him. While working for Edison, tension arose between the two men. Some came from Tesla's critiques of Edison's working style. Tesla believed calculations could save much time, but Edison preferred to jump right into a project without worrying about the math. Another area of tension came from a misunderstanding between the two men. According to Tesla, Edison promised him $50,000 if he could correct the dynamos on the dynamo machines. When Tesla did this quickly, Edison backed out and said he had only been joking. Tesla was horribly embarrassed and quit in 1885, taking a job digging ditches in the New York streets. However, Tesla was not ready to give up on his inventions. When he wasn't digging, he continued his experiments and designs, even setting up a lab in his hotel room and on the roof. He started his own little company, Tesla Electric Light and Manufacturing. Under this company, he applied for his first United States patents for a fail switch in outdoor arc lights and improved dynamos. Despite having his own business, Tesla's mind was not built for running it. He was more of a scientist than a businessman, which would hurt him later in life. His work continued to attract attention, though. Soon after patenting his electromagnetic motor, Tesla began working for George Westinghouse, a New Yorker who had made his name in the railroad industry and was now branching into electricity. Like other investors before him, Westinghouse saw Tesla's potential, especially with AC electricity, and he paid Tesla well for it. Tesla's involvement with Westinghouse started the War of the Currents. Tesla's main focuses were demonstrating that AC electricity was safe and continuing his other inventions. He was an eccentric genius and never married or had children. His work on electricity was successful, but through poor business decisions, he died alone, impoverished at the Hotel New Yorker on January 7, 1943. Despite his unnoticed departure, Tesla's work continues to impact our daily lives, showing us the impact that hard work and a determined mind can have on the world. Who was Thomas Edison? Thomas Edison is one of the most famous American inventors in history. He applied for more than a thousand patents during his life, and his interests range from electricity to motion pictures. He was born on February 11, 1847, and was educated at home by his mother, Nancy. 
Nancy had a formal education, unlike her husband, and she believed her children should have the same education she did. She inspired a love for lifelong learning in her son. Soon, Edison was asking questions about the world around him. His curiosity fueled his scientific interests, even if his experiments occasionally landed him in trouble. When he turned 12, Edison began working as a newspaper, magazine, and candy vendor for the Grand Trunk Railroad. At the same time, he discovered that he had a severe hearing loss. He had had several illnesses when he was younger, including scarlet fever. By the time he was a young teenager, Edison was functionally deaf. He didn't let this stop him. In fact, Edison's deafness led him to improve Bell's telephone, because he couldn't hear it, and to create the phonograph. When he was 14, Thomas Edison began training as a telegrapher. He was let go from several telegrapher positions for experimenting without approval and sending unauthorized messages. Edison was too focused on inventing to let this stop him and focused on improving the telegraph system, which he did in 1864. He created the Morse repeater, which slowed down messages and punched Morse code into a strip of paper, reducing errors. Although he stayed in the telegraph business for a couple more years, Edison was now focused on turning his inventions into a profit. His attempt at a vote recorder for Congress failed, but he reworked it as a universal stock ticker. Thomas Edison then reworked the telegraph system to send four messages on a wire. Western Union paid him $30,000. With that money, Edison finally had the capital to build his inventing workshop at Menlo Park in New Jersey. Thomas Edison was not interested in electricity at first. He was more interested in inventions and turning a profit. He liked to jump between projects, and one of his early scandals involved the telephone. Alexander Graham Bell invented it, but the device only had a small range. Western Union asked Edison to improve it. He came up with the version people used until the 1980s, but the patent lawsuits kept all relevant players tied up for years afterward. His ingenuity included other inventions and improvements, such as the phonograph and moving pictures. He originally intended the phonograph to record telephone messages, but it quickly moved into the entertainment sector as people recorded speeches and music. Others' explorations inspired his work on moving pictures. Edison's first attempts to copy them could only be viewed under a microscope, one person at a time, but it awakened excitement in people. In 1892, the kinetoscope, which allowed moving pictures to be projected on a screen, was invented, and Edison used it and other inventions until he was forced out of the film industry by other inventors. His work on the light bulb is possibly one of his most famous inventions, but like much of Edison's work, he was not the first to come up with the idea. That honor goes to Humphrey Davy, a chemist in Cornwall, England. Edison focused on improving the light bulb for commercial profit, including changing the filament to bamboo fibers and creating a vacuum. Famously, Edison discussed how he had found a thousand ways not to build a light bulb before finally settling on the current model. His light bulb lit the world, helping us see our lives in a new light. He also became involved in electricity, building a light bulb factory in 1878 and eventually developing the DC system. His work on electricity made him famous giving him the capital he needed to continue inventing and generating money from his discoveries, even if many were reworks of other people's ideas. Edison was financially successful over his lifetime, and he left behind a reasonably sized family. He finally passed on October 18, 1931, and was remembered nationwide as the man who helped give us the light bulb and brought light to the Second Industrial Revolution. Who was better? Comparing the two men may seem a natural outcome of the War of the Currents. After all, they were on opposite sides. Edison stuck to his work on DC electricity at his company. At the same time, Tesla held on to his work on AC electricity at Westinghouse's company. Still, neither man was the only one working on this new innovation. Other inventors and scientists worldwide also made discoveries that impact how we use electricity today. So neither Tesla nor Edison is fully responsible for the two competing types of electricity. The War of the Currents took off between Edison's and Westinghouse's companies. But Edison started with an advantage. He was a much better performer than Tesla. Nikola Tesla had obsessive-compulsive disorder, and his symptoms intensified throughout his life. Although he was comfortable speaking to the scientific community, he could not perform as Edison did. Thomas Edison loved working in audience, and he was a gifted salesman. Edison could read the markets and tailored his various inventions for maximum profit. He was so good at advertising and spreading his name 
that he even received credit for things he did not invent, like Bell's telephone. However, Edison could not focus and lacked the scientific intellect Tesla had, so he did not see or listen to the flaws in DC electricity. DC electricity only worked within one mile of the generator, so supplying all of New York City quickly became costly for Edison's company. AC electricity could travel much farther than DC electricity on small wires. As Edison realized, Westinghouse and Tesla were catching up to his success. Edison began negative propaganda about them and AC electricity. Installing the overhead lines for AC electricity was dangerous, and Edison used the accidents to create fear and tout his own company. Westinghouse attempted to convince Edison to come to a civil solution, but Edison refused and stuck to his dramatic attempts to discredit Westinghouse and Tesla. Thankfully, Edison's theatrics did not stop Tesla's work. Westinghouse and Tesla continued to discuss the safety of AC with the public. Eventually, they were able to attract customers to AC by filling in the gaps in Edison's network and ultimately proving AC was safe to use in the domestic sphere. By 1892, Edison had stepped away from electricity and merged Edison's Electric with Thomson Houston to form General Electric, which used Thomson Houston's AC patents. Historians cited the end of the War of the Currents in 1893 when Tesla's AC system lit the white city at the Chicago World Columbian Exhibition. Some rare electric systems still use DC today, but it is generally reserved for isolated areas that only need power over a small distance. Overall, Nikola Tesla and Westinghouse won the War of the Currents, AC is today's primary electrical system. However, Edison won the publicity side of the war. Most people have heard of Thomas Edison and know he is connected to the development of electricity but not as many people have heard of Tesla. While this has changed in recent years, Edison remains the more widely known of the two men. Both Edison and Tesla were important in the development of electricity in the late 1800s, and their contributions have changed how we live and see the world. While they had different strengths, the modern world would be very different today without these men with their unique strengths trying to make the world a brighter place. How would you like to get a deeper understanding of history? Impress your friends? and predict the future more accurately based on past events. If this sounds like something you might be into, then check out the brand new Captivating History Book Club by clicking the first link in the description. To learn more about Tesla and Edison, check out our book, Tesla vs. Edison, a captivating guide to the war of the currents and the life of Nikola Tesla and Thomas Edison. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.